One of AMD's biggest reveals at this year's 2021 Computex Expo was the announcement of their Fidelity FX Super Resolution tech. But is this new upscaling tech a worthy competitor to the well-established DLSS from NVIDIA? Well, let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. AMD have finally announced it, their answer to Nvidia's DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling. This was a feature that PC gamers, especially Radeon users, have been highly anticipating and yearning for at least a couple years at this point. Sure, ray tracing may have been a bit overhyped, I mean the game library has definitely grown and I will be making a separate video about that in the near future, but many people still look at ray tracing as a feature that would be nice to have but not necessarily a must have. DLSS on the other hand, especially with the DLSS 2.0 update last year, was a feature that practically everyone within the PC hardware community said that if you are able to take advantage of it and enable it, then definitely do so. It's great being able to utilize this tech to help boost performance in the game you're playing, while also being able to maintain the same visual quality if not better. This enabled the user to enjoy their games to fulfill whatever preference they desired, whether it was to help boost performance to reach higher FPS in a competitive shooter, or being able to play AAA games at higher resolutions, with features like ray tracing enabled at acceptable frame rates. I recently did a playthrough of Control on my 4K OLED, and that game with RTX turned on looked fantastic. However, if it wasn't for DLSS, then I couldn't have enjoyed Control like that with nearly every set Getting maxed, with ray tracing on high and attain close to 60 FPS. So it was really helpful in that regard. Cyberpunk 2077 was the same way. My 2080 did struggle to maintain a smooth experience at 1440p, and this was without ray tracing turned on, and this game is just demanding like that. But with DLSS, I was able to then attain a smooth and playable experience with those high quality visuals. This was a huge selling point for Team Green, and whenever there was discussion surrounding Radeon vs GeForce, such as whether you should buy an RTX 3080 or 6800 XT, it was these extra features that helped tip the scale in Nvidia's favor. Sure, rasterization performance was practically a tie between those two cards, but AMD didn't have a DLSS competitor, and that was a huge selling point. I'll be one of the first to admit that I was doubtful of them even being able to bring out a competing solution in time because we hadn't seen any demos recently or performance numbers from them until now. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution does seem like a great piece of tech with lots of potential. One of its biggest advantages is that this is another one of AMD's GPU open technologies, which means it's available for everyone to use, any game developer, and yes, even AMD's competitors. In fact, a big brain move that AMD did at the show was showcase the GTX 1060 utilizing this tech as well to help boost its per frame rate, which is definitely a big deal. While Nvidia has been touting for the last two years that if you want to experience DLSS, then you'll have to upgrade to a 20 or 30 series GPU, and as of now, with everything that's going on, it's not really feasible. So there are a ton of GTX 10 series and 900 series owners sitting on cards like the GTX X1060, which by the way is one of the most popular GPUs on the Steam hardware survey, and many who are still sitting on cards like the 1080 or 1070 that would love this sort of upscaling tech to help breathe more life into their GPUs and systems. This was a great jab at Nvidia because they just showed everyone that they could have easily implemented something like DLSS for Pascal owners as well, but they didn't, and that's not really surprising coming from Nvidia. If Nvidia do embrace it, they for sure won't be using Fidelity FX as a way to promote it, but instead they'll be using their own branding as they always do, probably call it something like DLSS compatible, so we'll see what they do. Along with that, AMD did show the tech working on their own GPUs as well, of course, such as the RX 6800 XT in Godfall which gained nearly 60% more performance using their ultra quality preset. And just like DLSS, they too will be adding multiple presets so the user can decide how much of a trade-off they want between performance and quality. Performance wise, it does definitely seem promising, and these gains are similar to what we've seen from Nvidia's DLSS implementations. However, remember, the further down the preset you go, the inferior your image quality gets and the blurrier things look, as it's upscaling from a lower internal resolution, which has less information to work with, so that results in an even inferior image. Trying to upscale something like 720p to 4K, even with AI-based hardware accelerated tensor cores, actually looks quite inferior compared to native. But going from 1440p to 4K, even 1080p to 4K in some instances 
looks great. Also, just like with DLSS, FSR will have to be implemented on a game by game basis. So it's unfortunately not a universal setting that you can turn on in your global driver settings. That would have been really cool and a huge advantage for Team Red had they accomplished this, but at least with GPU open standards, it'll make it much more easier for devs to access the tech and implement it in their own titles. Along with that, quality and performance will also vary from title to title. Some games may look great with the upscaling tech, some may look not so great, some will offer great performance uplifts while others may not benefit so greatly from it. Speaking of image quality, this is one one area I did want to talk about. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution isn't using a pre-trained neural network AI design that gets loaded onto your driver, instead it's using spatial upscaling technology, not an AI trained model along with motion vectors. Plus, there are no hardware accelerated AI tensor cores for the hardware either. This is why it's able to work on a wide variety of hardware and it's easier to implement, but the image quality will be noticeably worse than DLSS 2.0. Think of AMD's implementation as analogous to Nvidia's DLSS 1.0, which unfortunately didn't get a lot of positive feedback. It wasn't until DLSS 2.0 where you could actually see a great visual picture attained or even a slight boost in image quality. Plus, Nvidia's solution also has stuff like denoising built in, which can help mask any sort of artifacting results from an upskilled image. And you guys can see this for yourselves, as in the demo showcasing the GTX 1060, the upskilled image does look noticeably worse. Textures on objects are pretty blurry. Hopefully this isn't the case for every game and it's improved over time, but I'd temper your expectations if you were thinking that FSR would look as good as DLSS 2.0 right out of the gate. I'd be wary of trying to use this tech on a giant display panel like a 55 inch plus TV, however where I do think this tech will shine will be smaller panels like laptop displays, where the screens are ranging from 13 to 17 inches, which yields in higher pixel densities, and that can help mask those blurred textures a bit better, and the end result will be higher performance and potentially better battery life which is very crucial for a laptop. As of now, AMD said they have 10 game studios and engines on board for 2021. We'll see how fast they can grow this list, because if you saw Nvidia's Computex presentation, they did announce numerous more titles with support for DLSS and ray tracing, such as Doom Eternal. Nonetheless, I am really happy to see that we finally have a DLSS competing tech from AMD, whereas before, if you wanted to take advantage of this sort of t upscaling tech, Nvidia was your only option. So now that's not the case anymore, the playing field gets a bit more leveled here. It's just a matter of adoption and improvement. FSR was something I was very much looking forward to, and the fact that it can even be implemented on older GPUs and just works right out of the box like that, even Nvidia's GPUs, is greatly beneficial for gamers. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.